I'm Darren Schmitz with VMware, and in this video, you'll see how to set up the NSX Advanced Load Balancer to distribute traffic between servers. The NSX Advanced Load Balancer is a fully featured and scalable load balancing solution that can easily be deployed within Google Cloud VMware Engine. At a high level, the solution is broken down into multiple components. The Avi controller is deployed first and communicates with vCenter and NSX to provision service engines, coordinate resources, monitor traffic, and provide a web interface for administrators. The service engine VMs, which are automatically deployed and managed by the controller, reside in the data plane to provide the virtual services for an organization's applications. Let's get started. The first prerequisite is to create a content library that will store the service engine image. This image is what the controller uses to deploy new service engine VMs on demand. In addition, for this demo I have uploaded the installation OVA for the NSX ALB controller. To begin, I right click on the controller installation OVA to create a new VM from this template. Following through the wizard, I then provide a name for the controller VM. Specify resources such as the data center, cluster, data store, and management network. On the final screen, I enter the IP information, the sysadmin authentication key if desired, then I click Next and then Finish to get the process started. Once deployed, switching over to the hosts and clusters view, I can now power on the controller VM. After a few minutes, the controller has booted, the web interface has initialized, and we can begin configuration. The first step is to create a new admin password, enter an administrator email address, then click Create Account. When the wizard opens, here is where I provide the system settings such as the backup passphrase, DNS IP, domain, SMTP, and finally the multi-tenant selections, then click Save. At this point, the top banner offers the ability to register the controller with cloud services. However, for this demo, I'm just going to skip the registration for now. The first thing I'm going to show configuring is the licensing. For this demo, I'm going to select the Enterprise tier and click Save. By default, an evaluation license for the Enterprise tier is activated granting a 30-day grace period to try any of the features. If you already have a key or license file, it can be submitted using this field. It is important to remember that modifying the license level later may deactivate some features, so it is recommended to apply the correct license before beginning. Next, I need to provide the credentials so that my controller can access my vCenter server and NSX manager. First, I supply the NSX admin credentials to my private cloud. Here is where I paste my NSX admin password copied from the VMware Engine Resources portal page. I run through this wizard one more time to provide it with the cloud owner username and password for my vCenter instance as well. Now I need to configure my cloud connector by clicking on Infrastructure, Clouds, then Create an NSXT Cloud. In this wizard, I provide a name, select DHCP, and create a naming prefix for the service engine VMs. I can then paste in the NSXT manager address and select the NSX admin credentials I specified earlier. The next section is where I select the transport zone, logical router, and segment for the management network. Then I do the same for the data networks. This is where I choose my virtual IP network I created previously. Finally, I add in my vCenter server information. I give it a name, select my private cloud vCenter IP, the credentials I specified earlier, and lastly, the content library. When I click Save, it begins creating my NSXT cloud. In just a few moments, the status will turn from yellow to green, and then I can continue. Now, I can create my virtual service. I switch back to the application section, select Create Virtual Service, then use the basic setup. I select my cloud I created previously, then click Next. For my virtual routing forwarding context, I select Tier 1, then click Next. 
On the next screen, I first give my virtual service a name. For this demo, I will name it Intranet. Next, I create my virtual IP for the virtual service, or VIP for short. I select my Tier 1 logical router, then click Add to enter my static IP for my cluster VIP. Lastly, I paste in my server pool IP range for the three web servers, then click Save. When I switch back to vCenter, we can watch the service engine VMs deploying and powering on for this newly created virtual service. Switching back to the NSX ALB management console, I want to show the pool settings before beginning testing. Under Applications, I select Pools, then click the pencil to edit my intranet server pool. The server section is where I can change any of the server settings such as adding or removing hosts from the pool. When I click over to the health monitor section, you can see it has automatically added the HTTP health monitor for me. This will monitor servers in the pool and remove them from the load balance if they are not responding. Switching back to the general section, I change the load balance algorithm to round robin for our testing, then click save. Back at the Windows desktop, you can see I have four tabs open. To demonstrate the round robin load balancing, I have set up three web servers to display a static page with their unique server's name. The first tab shows Web 1, there is also Web 2, and Web 3. For the last tab, I have previously created a DNS A record for the server pool and assigned it the virtual services VIP. When I load the page, it displays the first web server in the rotation. Clicking Refresh will cycle through all three of the web servers using the round robin algorithm as I specified earlier. And that concludes this demo of how to deploy and configure the NSX Advanced Load Balancer to distribute traffic between servers. For more information about Google Cloud VMware Engine, check out VMware Cloud Tech Zone.